What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here, last ex-witness on all social. And this is another one of those live demos from the archives. These were a few years old. I think the, the newest one I'm gonna put out here is from like 2019. So I'm not sure where this one was from, uh, but you guys have been asking me if I could find them and put them back out here. And they ended up on Adorama's Facebook live stream back when they were, you know, of the moment. Uh, but I know a lot of people avoid Facebook like the plague, so here's me bringing them back to you. These do not do well on this channel at all, and I'm pretty sure it's because they're so long, but that's what live format is. So I tried to cut out as much fat as I could as usual. Again, the stream quality was pretty junky. Uh, ripping them down made it even worse, and there were even chunks missing from the stream skipping stuff, so there might be some weird jump cuts, and I apologize for that. But it was a good one it was fill light it's that light that no one really talks about too much you always hear about like the key light and hair lights but no one really gets really deep into the fill light where you're actually refining your shadows refining your light cleaning it up really looking uh making your lighting setup tight right so this uh goes from everything from inactive which is like bounce boards reflectors to active like actual lighting units that you can throw in there as a second light and stuff like that uh, of course it's a live event so there was crowd interaction there's a lot of cool stuff that goes on i, I love live format and i think that's like really where it's at. However, these do too pretty bad on this channel. I think it's because they're so long, people don't want to click on them, so the views go down. But those of you who do watch them, it's overwhelming how positive the feedback is from the comments and the likes and stuff like that. If you do want to help out these types of archives, please share them around. That's the best way to support this channel. And also, if you did like this video and you haven't watched any of these, please check out the other ones. As of right now, from this video, there's three others. So this is the fourth one. There is character lighting, which I think was one of the best ones ever. And it was my last ever demo from the Adorama event space. So it's got like a special place in the heart kind of thing. Uh, also did shutter drag, which is something I get asked a lot, I guess, because I do it so much and I kind of got like pinned to that technique and I'm totally fine with that. So check that out if you're into like ghosting, shutter drags, all light streaks, all stuff like that, light painting, all sorts of things. And I have another one like that coming out. But the other one that's on the channel is DIY solutions with speed lights. So household items, junk, garbage to make your speed lights look cleaner, better, act like bigger lights and all sorts of other things. So if you're a speed light shooter, you might wanna check that out. But for now, I hope you guys like this. If you do, hit like and share this video around if you can. Hit subscribe plus the bell to get notified more videos like this come out and uh, please enjoy the demo later. Okay, I'm gonna clear this away and I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna take this away and boom, I'm live for real. Autumn, one of my favorite redheads of all time. Uh, one, just one. Okay. All right, so I haven't done a demo in a while and I figured why not do it on the busiest day I ever had ever, right? So let's do this. Does everyone know what they're here for? No one stays quiet in my demos and you're not gonna look at me at dead eyes, so this is gonna be great. What are we here for tonight? Lighting workshop, right? What specifically are we talking about? Fill light. What is fill light? Nope, what is fill light? Jason, what's fill light? You went to two of my workshops hands on. What is fill light? Not the main light. Not the main light. What's the name of the main light? Key light. Key light, K-E-Y, key light. Fill light is the light that no one really gets into and doesn't really uh, go in depth. They kind of gloss over like, hey, here's your key light. Oh, let's throw, throw a fill in there and keep going, right? They never really get into what that fill light is. But for me, fill light was everything. And it was everything because it was the light that took you from pointing a light at a subject and praying to really shaping and refining what you were looking at from textures. She knows that's right. You point a light, you pray, you go, I think that's right. I mean, you know, but you see shadows, right? And you see what we call shadow patterns. Let's get serious now. This is my fourth time going live today, so it's getting a little weird. All right, so what happens with your key light, right? So when we have a key, I'm gonna trip over this like 400 tons. So let's say I got a key light. This is, this is a nice light, right? Key light is our main light source, but it's also the, the source that we're gonna start with to really shape and define our subject, right? We can choose large source, small source, right? Soft, hard light. All that stuff is qualities of light styles but the fill light is what really gets us beyond that. So no matter what I'm using, whether it's soft or hard or whatever, the fill light is gonna actually refine the patterns that I make. Does that make sense to everybody? So as the sort of wisdomy Daniel Norton would say, shadows happen where the light isn't, right? So if I'm shining a light on autumn directly, where would my shadow be? Like right on the background, right? 
but there's also facial features. There's also shoulders and hands and wardrobe. And what creates texture is shadows. When you're seeing skin texture, it's microscopic shadows creating these things. They don't just like happen to be there. There's dimension and dimension happens from gradation and the depth of that gradation happens from the shadow itself. Does that make sense everybody? Right? So you got to think of like everybody's facial features like a sundial. So like your nose, for example, is like a perfect sundial pretty much. How many times have you shot something with a, with a, a speed light and gone like that, right? You see the shadows across the face. The chin becomes this black like chin strap of shadow. Well, there's reasons for that. So when you put on a speed light, right? If you take a camera, I mean, this is a Nikon D850. This is a Pro Photo A1. This is like top end stuff. If I put this on TTL and take a shot of Autumn, it's going to do the best job of exposure, right? But it's not knowing my light pattern. That's up to me, where I place the light in position to her, the angle, the degree, how the height, the, how close it is to her. All this uh, changes the shadow pattern itself. Makes sense to you guys? So like while your exposure could be dead on, the lighting pattern could still suck. It's that simple. You know, and there's no saying what's right or wrong as far as lighting pattern goes, but there is a, a, me a measure of saying, is that image successful for you? Is it successful for what you're trying to do? Like if I was shooting Autumn and she says like, hey, I actually need like a more professional corporate looking headshot because I'm going to become a real estate agent. I'm not going to shoot her like she's overly glowing beauty queen. You know, I'm not going to do the glamour shot for her. I'm going to give her a little more dimension and jawline and, and a little bit of structure to her because we want to give her that. We're not trying to deceive people for their glamour in that case. Does that make sense to everybody? Now it's like, what do we do with fill light? All right, well, there's a ton of different types. Just like there's a ton of types of key light, there's just as many types of fill light because that's, there's just infinite ways to put our light out there, but all of our lighting is predictable. Angle in, angle out. Whatever angle it comes in at, it's gonna reflect that. And that's when you guys first get started, they, they sell you those reflectors, right? Like those circle reflectors and stuff. That's what you're doing. You're taking the key light of the sun and bouncing it off of that reflector and back into your subject to clean up those shadows. Well, what'd you just do to those shadows? No one's staying quiet. I am not kidding. What do they do to those shadows, Jason? With the reflector? Yeah. You filled them in. And that's a fill light. But that's an inactive fill light. Let's get a shot off. Let's start talking about shadow patterns and let's start breaking those shadow patterns with really cool stuff. I'm gonna pull out some DIY materials, some stuff you can buy here. Hey Andy, if you guys don't know Andy, he runs the used department, so if uh, he doesn't know what it is, they didn't make it, I promise you. So I'm just letting you know that. All right. Or they made it within the last 10 years. Or they made it within the last 10 years because he's totally out of touch. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna not start with this light. I think I'm gonna start with a Profoto B1. It is a battery powered monolight, 500 watts seconds. What does that stuff mean? Nothing to you right now because we're just talking about shadow patterns. I don't care what you're using to create these shadow patterns, but knowing how to control them is the key here, okay? Although this is the key light. I know I'm confusing the hell out of you. Know. Hey, how you doing? You all right? I'm gonna use a small source, and I'm gonna use a small source because I want shadow patterns to show you guys. If I used a giant seven foot umbrella with a sock on it to make a crazy giant bath of light, which would be a super soft look and probably be great, you wouldn't see any shadows for me to shape up, take down, stretch out, and do things with. So for that reason, I'm going to use this box right here. This is one of my favorite boxes of all time. This is the Pro Photo 1x1.3. One one it's a small source, right? So this is, this is Autumn's head. This is my light. My light is softer when it gets bigger in relation to my subject. So if it's always going to be about Autumn's face size or smaller as I pull it away, it's always going to be a harder light. Okay, so that's one reason. I'm also a speed light guy, so I kind of like my lights small and lots of them and really shape up my uh, subject. Uh, let's keep, yeah, we'll keep you sitting. Can I get you to be like right into that X a little bit? Okay, the first thing I gotta do when I'm shooting in a studio is what? Take a picture of a chair, clearly. Uh, what's the first thing I, I gotta do? Check the lighting. Check the lighting of what? In the room. In the room, right? What's this lighting called? Ambient lighting, ambient, available, right? It's what's available to me. I could shoot her with this, it would suck. I mean, you're still beautiful, you know, but, but it wouldn't be the way we want it, right? We, we were creating our light. Hey, Paul, what's up, man? What's up? Chilling, man. Maybe I should use a light meter. Yes. Not yet, though. 
<laughs> the ambient light in the room, I wanna get rid of it. And why do I wanna do that? Cause I wanna make sure that all the light I'm recording is my own, but also, especially for this demo, when I have no light in the space, I can measure how much light is inside my shadows to begin with, because if there's no light in the shadows besides what my one light is creating, that's my shadow base. So let me show you. So I'm gonna start off at F8, I, uh, ISO 100. I'm gonna be at 250 of a second. 250 is my flash sync, which is the fastest shutter speed I can go while staying in sync with my strobe. Everyone know flash sync, we're good with that? Okay, cool because I had a rough time with that in Vegas, remember? <laughs> I'm gonna make sure this light isn't on and we're gonna shoot with Autumn really quick. And click. There it is, okay. So that's a black frame, but if I go into capture one and I go into my exposure, I start seeing her, right? Right about there, you start seeing her come up. But that's this number right here, four, that's four stops away. That means that's the depth of my shadows that are gonna be if I'm using a single light. Does that make sense to you? That like, if I was able to open my lens four stops, I'd start changing those shadows. Make sense? Okay, so let's set this back to zero. And that's important because I'm gonna be doing everything with my shadows. I gotta know what I'm starting with. You know what I mean? I gotta know the purity of the light I'm working in. If I was in a daylight studio, I might only have a stop away. That's a big difference. That means if I start slowing my shutter speed down, I could change the, the wall or the, or the atmosphere around my model. And that could save you a whole, an extra light. It could save you having to figure out that ratio for the background. Like you could just slow down your shutter and all of a sudden your background starts coming up. It could save you everything. But that's because I knew how far my ambient light was away from what I'm recording, okay? I'm sure Daniel Lauren did a video on that somewhere. Yeah. Does that also work if you're shooting TTL? Nah, don't worry about it, it's an icon. Uh, if it's shooting TTL, every time you fire TTL, it's taking a light meter reading off of a pre-flash, okay? So that doesn't change my ambient settings in the room, meaning if I shoot um, Autumn, I'm sorry, I'm like the fourth model today, I'm killing myself. Uh, if, I, if I were to shoot with Autumn and I started on TTL with pre-flash, it would measure the light reflecting off of her, then it would change my power settings based on my aperture, all right, and it all happens in milliseconds. Now let's say Autumn uh, was wearing like a black jacket, but then she opened up and she had a white shirt underneath. That pre-flash reflects more and it might change the power setting on my flash because it's thinking it's seeing more light. So it might actually lower my power settings, but her skin didn't change, her hair color didn't change, things like that. It, it'll start changing things based on that. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. I've shot portraits, this sounds really ridiculous, but it's true, I shot portraits so tight that when they smiled big, their teeth changed my TTL. It's, it's weird, it happens. All right, let's get a light going. Uh, so I'm gonna throw this B1 on a standard, pretty much overhead looky type. Ooh, you heard that? Clickety click, click, click. This is that good arm that I like so much. This is the, don't worry, it won't hurt when it hits you. It'll be all right, it'll be okay, it'll okay. I'm gonna take the one sandbag that Adorama has. I'm gonna make sure that Auden doesn't die today. If you, you know, after the demo you can die, but right now I need you. If you're an agency model, I'd just be like, oh, I'll get another one. But you know, you're just a, you're a good friend, you know? Listen, what happens if the model dies? What happens? You lose the job, you get fired, it's over. So it's like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> Don't get red. Don't get all red, please. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna set this into group A because it's my key light. Uh, when you're using multiple light sources and they're in groups, it's, it's usually standard that like A is your key light, B is your fill light, C could be your peripherals like your hair, your rim, D and other uh, can be like your backgrounds or environmental lights and other things like that. If you go as far as like F or whatever, those could be like FX lights, like things like I'm lighting up the inside of this, you know, cabinet or something, like something weird like that. Right now we're just using this one key light. I'm going to get rambly because I said I was going to, but... All right, I'm going to take a shot in TTL because Profoto has a system where the TTL shoots, locks in the power of the light, and then I can go into manual and adjust it however I want. So that's almost the same thing as using a, a light meter, right? It's just another way of metering light that's coming out of this. All right, so should I, should I do this with a modeling light? What do you think? Yeah? yeah? Just, for just for a second. And I'm gonna shut down some light so you guys can actually see patterns happening, okay? No, no, that's the projector, don't touch. Daniel Norton touching everything. Does that work for you guys? Yeah? Am I still, I'm still good? Okay. So now when we look at Autumn, I can actually see 
the shadow patterns I'm creating. When you're looking at a modeling light in studio, it's never gonna be like, that's what it is. You kind of have to like take it for what you're looking at. Even if you have variable power on your modeling light, which I don't even think I have on, I think I just have like full on blast, which hopefully this doesn't die during the demo. Uh, but when you look at it, you kind of have to exaggerate it. If there's a little bit of shadow, odds are you're gonna see that shadow. Does that make sense to you guys? All right, so let's take a look. You, so when I, when I light a model, I, I start with the shadow pattern because I'm trying to see what I want. Do I want to see that cheekbone? Do I want to see that jawline? Or do I want to fill it all in? If they have a rounder face, maybe I want a narrower source that when it hits here, it falls off the shadow faster. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm not changing the shape, but I'm giving a different appearance to the shape of their, their skull um, face. <laughs> but I like her skull a lot. I actually like oh, Autumn's skull a lot. So that's why, actually, I think I've always lit you with like narrow little lights, right? And she has these very, uh, Autumn has these very, uh, I call them like heavy eyes. They're soul, they're like very soulful eyes. So no matter what I do, we're gonna see those eyes. I mean, well, I wish I could explain what I'm trying to say, but clearly I'm good at diving demos. So, you know, creamy light. Let's take a shot. Still, FA 250th, one of dry ISO. Hey kiddo, I'm focusing on the eye. And we're gonna take a shot. So with TTL, that exposure is on, but you might say that still looks dark. Right? Does anyone think that looks dark? Let me see some hands. Nobody. We're, okay, we're good. We're done. We're out. Under we're out. Neck, we're out. Under the neck? What are you talking about? You just said that was fine, man. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, I, she has a beautifully long neck. Why would I want to show that a little bit? And fill light is one way we can do that. Now, controlling the fill light is where I feel the most skill and, and technical prowess comes from. But let's check, take a look at our key light, for example. When I look at my skin tones... I can see texture, right? Like there's still a human being there. When I look at her eyeball, whoops, let me do this. When I look at her eyeball in the loop over there, I mean, that's texture, that's Look at that. So just this little bit of shadow gives me shape to her eyeball, which I, is a big deal to me. A lot of people Photoshop the hell out of them. They look like they're flat pieces of plastic. And did you know nobody has veins in their eyes? It's a miracle, right? Nobody has veins in their eyes somehow. No, I, it's, it's, I like seeing the humans that I'm documenting. Are you, you all right with being human tonight? All right, it's my girl. <laughs> all right, so we have, the, we have the cheekbones. I'm really into it. They're sunk in a little bit because she has them. We can exaggerate them with this smaller light source. If I were to fill those in, her, her, her actual face would look flatter and start going wider because the depth is gone. But the same distance across her face is there. Make sense to everybody? So we can do a bunch of things. We can do fill, we can do an extra light, we can do a reflector, we can bounce, do a bunch of different things. Let's start off with, without putting another light in there, let's see what we look like when we break that shadow. Now I can do a bunch of things, I'm sure online they're gonna say, why don't you use the Brooklyn reflector? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do something better than that. I'm gonna use a pizza box, and I'm doing this for, for a purpose. When you guys look at reflectors, there's a big difference in all the substrates you're reflecting in. Whatever your light touches and comes back to your model, it's gonna take that property. So if I took something with a little off color in the white, it's gonna have warmer shadows, right? If I took this pizza box, which has a little bit of a sheen to it, it is gonna give me an easier kick. If I use this side, she might have red shadows. So it's not just about putting something there to reflect the light, it's about getting the quality of light back out. And, you know, I'm gonna, I'll show you the pizza box. Let's do this. Uh, show you, well, we got, I'll use the, I'm gonna use the shinier one because the matte one gives me a problem every time. We don't hate the matte pizza box, but there's a difference. This is like the part of the demo you guys get nothing from, I'm sorry. But we'll, we'll do it for real. I just want to make a point. So let's stretch in there. I'm gonna, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it about a 120 mil. I can already see it fill in. Let's take a look. Boom. Changed a lot, right? I kept the same power of the light. I did not change the light, did not change my power settings. All I did was change the fact that there was no fill light and adding in a fill light. Now I still have a shadow there. Great. Because what you have to realize is no matter what I do with a bounce board, no matter how close I get it in, no matter how reflective it is, the light is only coming from here. As soon as it leaves this strobe, it's dying off. And as soon as it hits that bounce, it's dying off. And as soon as it comes out of that bounce, it's dying off. Inverse square, right? Blah, 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 math. Was that the quote? So that's Daniel Norton's big quote. Yes. Yes, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, what's so up? I was looking at the other picture. What picture? 
um, the one that you just did. Okay, that one? Yeah, so you mean to tell me if you move that whiteboard up, it's not going to like disappear more? No, it's not going to. In fact, so in fact, when I shot this, that pizza box was as close to my lens as possible without being in the frame, and that's the maximum amount of bounce I'm going to get out of that. Now, if this wasn't enough, what's my other option? A light, because I can make my light equal power or more, in which case that light would become the key light because it's more light. It would, that's what you're exposing for. In fact, let's do that with an on-camera flash. So the position of your, key, of your fill light is just as important as the position of your key light. And most of the time you want it on axis with your lens coming out. The goal here with a fill light is to never overpower your key light. It's just to get in those shadows. And you, with another light, you can dial in where you want it to be. A good way to think of it is get your light uh, that's filling in to be a little, like about half the intensity of whatever your key light is. But that can mean a lot of things. These are two different lights. You know what I mean? But let's turn this on. Well, I moved right past the reflector thing, geez. All right, we'll go, we'll go back to reflector after I do the speed light thing, but I'm just giving you a real little perspective. Am I like five minutes deep on this demo? 20 minutes deep? So this light is at six, right? That's a 500 watt second light. This is 75 watt seconds. Even at full power, it's not gonna be this at full power. Does that make sense to you guys? So I'm gonna keep it real safe. And I'm gonna set this to, to three, which is half of that six, but in reality, it's even less because it's still not as powerful as this light. Does that make sense to you guys? So that's a good way to start, is that no matter what this light is, do the half, and this light can never be more powerful unless I'm closer, meaning I'm gonna stay at the same distance the whole time. Make sense? So let's do this, watch this mess happen. Let's take a look. And there, instead of it being this deep, deep black, She's got a little bit of the shadow broken, but I can dial that even more, right? So I'll go up another stop on this light. Hey, you. Let's take a look. You see how it's slowly filling more and more in? Let's just go crazy and go to five and a half, which is still, I, I'm not, this is gonna suck. We're gonna do it, because you asked for it, because you asked for it. You gotta laugh a little bit, all right? Look at me, there you go. Whoop, double tap, the second one's gonna suck. You see how much more it started affecting the frame now? So now we're starting to see that fill light happen because look at the shadow pattern, it's going up, which is basically where my flash is. This is in cool. However, this fill is really clean and barely there. And when we know the fill light's there is because when it's gone, we notice it's gone. And as Joe McNally famously says, the fill light is that light you don't realize is, gone, is there until it's gone. You know, you wanna make people believe that there's just that one source, that one shape. You know, it's coming from the window, but there's still 60 lights in that frame, you know? Uh, I mean, we get guilty of that kind of stuff. All right, let's do, let's, just so you guys can see how the shadows are breaking, I'm gonna do something pretty fun. Let's pull this flag in here. Ugh. I'm gonna pull this right, you know? This is, this is basically gonna be my controlled bounce because now it's always at this distance. I know where it's gonna be so I can stick on it and we can see what's happening. All right, so we know what it looks like without a, uh, without a fill, right? Like, we got that. Aluminum foil. It's a silver reflector, right? I'm looking at it, wow, oh, look at you. You're like the lady by the water now, look at you. So now, there's a matte side and a, and, a, and a more silvery side. I tend to like the matter side more. It gives more of like a duller kick, but we're gonna really snap it to a Slim Jim over here. All right, and I'm gonna actually pitch this a little, oh, I keep moving that knob, but it's not the knob, a little bit towards here because why? Angle in, angle out, right? If it's just flat, it's just gonna kick up instead of where I want it. Make sense? Yeah? Let's do this shot. So we know what she looks like without a fill right there. And just with a silver. Whoa! You know why? Because this light's on. Like a jerk, I left the speed light on. Where were you on that one? Where were you on that one? I know there's nothing. I know, it's crazy. Let's take a look. And you can see where the shadow gets filled in, right? Look at the difference. That's just with aluminum foil. I mean, I take this away, right? Hey, you. I take this away. Now we're actually sucking those shadows down because this is absorbing residual light. Think of it as reflecting black. In fact, you have a video coming out, right? It came out today. It came out today. So Daniel actually used this on a white shirt on a, on a white background to make a definitive line down a white shirt because it sucks, it, it absorbs that light. It's kind of like reflecting black. However, what if I didn't want to do this silver, right? Okay. 
I, I know, I hear you. You guys are roaring loud. It's I killing you, me. I thought you said it dies when it bounces off at the... No, it starts dying off. You start losing power. Whenever light leaves the source, it's just dying off. And if it's going to reflect off of something, it died more there. It's, you're, you're overworking this one source that the light's coming from. You know what I mean? It's never going to be more powerful than where it's coming from. Never. You know what I mean? Like think, I kind of try to imagine like water, right? If it comes out of a hose and hits something, well, whatever wetness stayed there took some of the volume of that water out. And that's kind of how I think of lighting. If you want it to be more diffused, you spray it and mist it, you know, you know, stuff like that. So let's take out a Brooklyn reflector. Let's do it. Okay, so this is a Brooklyn reflector. It's just a piece of foam core. You guys can spend $2 on this and be happy. I spray glued sil aluminum foil to the side of it. So I have, am I pretty now? <laughs> Am I really? Yeah. That's like a swipe up, right? Is this, would you swipe right like this or is it like this? No? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do just simple white. Let's just do a really, and what I like about white bounce a lot more than silver is silver is more of a reflector where it's directional and it's punchier and it's really, you're really working it where you need it. White, however, is more like a hit and a bath bow. It just like kind of spreads out everywhere because it's just reflecting. Um, it's just bouncing rather than hardcore focused reflecting. Does that make sense to you guys? So what you kind of want to do with that sense of a fill light is the reflecting kind is good if you're using a harder light source because you want it to kind of mimic how hard that key light is without it being there. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so let's do some whiteboard. Hard day, just looking forward. What a hard day. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. And you see, it just starts breaking away that shadow. As we break away that shadow, we lose definition. I mean, look where we were. You see that cheekbone? Where'd it go? It's starting to flatten out, right? It'll always be there because she has them, but we pull and push what we need out of someone's face based on the shadow patterns we get. And that includes imperfections in the skin. So when all these people like, pushing pores out of people's faces. Cause you know, apparently in 2019, nobody has pores and we evolved past having pores or veins or capillaries. I don't know if you knew this. Uh, yeah, I know that we, we injected Photoshop into all these people like three years ago. And apparently now we have no pores. If you want to minimize it, minimize it, take it away. You're not documenting anything. That's my opinion. If you don't like what I'm saying, you don't got to watch my demo. <laughs> I don't care anymore. All right. But let's, let's take these shadows to a different level, okay? Oh, uh, hey, Vanessa Joy. Vanessa Joy from France. I hope you had a good talk at uh, Pro Photos thing. So this, is <laughs> so this is just fluorescent paper. You can actually see the orange coming off it a little bit. So why wouldn't this reflect the color? Now, if I'm filling in the shadows, meaning I'm exposing for my highlight, I'm exposing for this light, the shadows are going where they may. If this is gonna be exposing my shadows, that means my shadows will turn this color. Right? So it'll be subtle, but let's do it. Let's see. Uh, uh, do a little bit of blue, put a little bit of pink in there. Maybe we'll throw a, ooh, a fluorescent green. Make you like a clowny kind of thing. I started doing this a while ago, and then this guy, Daniel Lawrence, started stealing my bit, you know? <laughs> it's true, you totally stole this thing. Actually, I don't want to do the yellow because that's too close to skin tone. Look at me. I will do pink, I like the pink. Yeah, look at me. So what I'm doing is when she looks at me, I'm looking at the shadow pattern that I'm going to be photographing and I'm looking at the shadows. I'm trying to see like exactly where I'm putting the balance and all that stuff. Okay, so we got a, we have a kid's kindergarten class going on up here now. Pizza boxes, it's been a, someone's birthday party happened. You know, hey, how you doing? You all right? I'm okay. Yeah. You out of here? Look at this guy. Yeah, walk away, <laughs> walk away. <laughs> this, is, this is why you never graduated. This is, <laughs> mwah. <laughs> All right, yeah. look at me. Now let's take a look at the reflectant and boom, those shadows are neon pink because we're seeing exactly where we're bouncing that light. Yeah, it's a cool little fun effect and I could probably put a gel in this light and make some crazy stuff happen, but I, the, the purpose of this is so you can actually see where it's affecting and it's not just in the shadows. What I'm trying to show you is over here where it goes from a shadow to a highlight and you see how that even if there's a color there, it doesn't overtake. Bob Davis in the house. Bob Davis is watching my demo. Oh man, Bob, you're gonna steal some more stuff. I'm just kidding, man. I love you. I'm just kidding. Um, but you see how it doesn't overtake the whole shape of her face. It doesn't just reflect because we're exposing for the key light. We're just refining the shadows with our bounce. Okay. And this is a really good exercise if you want to take a friend and just have them rotate their degree of their face to your lens or 
the degree of your key light to them and start seeing exactly how much shadow you pull. If I wanted more shadow out of her, you know what I could do? Now I'm gonna ruin this whole demo. I'm gonna pull this so farther away. If I pull this farther away, I made it smaller. I'm dragging those shadows even more. Look at me. Oh yeah. Uh, do you guys wanna do this with the pink or just the shadow? Just the shadow, just the shadow raise your hands. Just the shadow. just the shadow, okay. You're like, enough of these gimmicks? Is that what it is? Sir, your mustache is a gimmick, sir. Okay, I just want you to know that. All right, look at me. What, did you say my mom's on? No, no, no. Oh, okay. That would have been really weird. My mom's dead. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love your mom if you're watching. I love your mom. I love your mom. Love your mom. She'd understand that's for the joke. She'd understand that it's for, like, my dad's such a jerk. Like, I mean, that's not funny. He's a fat Greek guy. He's all right. Look at how much deeper that got. It's correct exposure, but I'm pulling the shadows. And look at the texture under her eye. It exaggerates. So if I'm trying to do character lighting and pull these things, because you got to keep in mind, my career was this doing this kind of stuff, and fill light to me was everything. <laughs> Forget about lighting them, it was everything about the texture. What am I trying to show? What kind of mood, what kind of feel? And that's in the fill light, that's in the, the shadows, but it starts, no matter what you do, whoops, with the key light. If I used a bigger light source, I wouldn't be seeing those shadows like this. If I used a bigger light source, that background would be more illuminated, more spread, right? So this is all stuff that you have in your hands, because, because without this light, I'm not shooting anything. We did all that. We did this together. We did this. <laughs> but what I'm trying to show you is like, can you switch me back? So what I'm trying to show is like, this isn't one of those demos where we do like these crazy dynamic shots, but we, this is where we start breaking down what we're really looking at, how we're really lighting, and how we're really trying to define the light and the quality of light that we wanna do. And this could work from any angle, right? Like I could light it from the side, fill it from the other side, things like that. But this is all stuff that exists in your hand, okay? And it starts with your key light. You can't have a fill light until you know what your key light's gonna be, what your situation there is gonna be. And you're gonna be like, oh, well I'll just buy this soft box and it'll be soft. Really, that's a soft box. How come I have hard light coming out? Why do I have hard light coming out? Why? Yeah. Nope, why do I have hard light coming out? Size of, the, size of the, box. the box. The distance affects the size because of the rate of relevance, like it gets smaller as I pull it away, but in the end, it's really the size of it that's affecting it. So when you're buying uh, modifiers or trying to modify your light in general, when you're shooting a speed light on camera and you bounce it off of a ceiling and it comes back, it looks soft because that's your light source now. The ceiling, the size of that ceiling is your light source. That's why it's softer. Your shadows get t bigger, denser, and more stretched out and defined the smaller your lights get and that includes them becoming smaller because you're dragging them farther away. Does that make sense? Like how many times do you put a light somewhere and you're like, whoa, 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 that's too intense. I pull it back and all of a sudden it looks like garbage. You pulled it back, you made it harder. What you need to worry about is did I get the exposure? Because in this, right, this first shot we did today, I have the exposure. Her skin looks fantastic because it's fantastic. I love it. Mm -hmm. But the shadow pattern wasn't really, I mean, I'm still fine with that shot in general, but when you start filling in that shadow, look at how much more to life she comes, how more inviting the feel is. She still has those punchy eyes, but we're not like lost in this chin strap of shadow. I should start to write a book, chin strap of shadow. I like it. Yeah, I like it, right? Can you, can you make that an item in your D&D games? I will. Okay, great. <laughs> Everyone get what's going on here? Are you still shooting? I am not shooting TTL. I kept this at the same power until I pulled it farther away, in which case I uh, gave it an extra half a stop to compensate for the distance. Uh, but look at how crazy this could be. And all, we're using the same light source, right? Same light source. What did I move? Maybe eight inches, maybe a foot. This is not, this is all what's in your hands. And that's why I take fill lights so seriously as far as when I look at someone's portfolios or their work, I try to look at their fill light more than anything. I, 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 I look at their first initial decisions of like, well, I want it to look like this. And then I think about, did you make it look like this? You know, is there any questions? I'm like rambling here. I'm flying through this one. I'm only half an hour deep. I don't know where to go with this now. No, I was kidding. What's up? You mean you want me to put it more forward? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Closer to her. Closer to her. For, so you want it. 
So at some point, it will be in your shot. You know what I mean? When we're doing this 45, can you switch me back? So I'm gonna change the light. Daniel Norton on his phone while I'm doing a live stream. It's all right. It's all right. It's, all right. it's, all right. it's okay. It's okay. I'll tip you well. Don't worry. Did you say I'm trying to social media? Is that what you just said? Oh my God, Dan. Uh, so me and Daniel are gonna go speed dating and try to vlog it. So this will be pretty awesome. You think we'll match? I think we'll match. I think we'll be pretty good. I'm the big spoon though. Definitely. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So when we're doing this type of setup, which is pretty staple, what you're really doing for the most part is you're splitting the difference between lighting your model with a bath forward, not hitting them and hitting a reflector to get back into those shadows. Because most of the time you never, you're not really pointing a light specifically at someone. You're letting the edge of the light wrap on them, which makes a, a easier light to work with allowing you, because if I had this, how could I do this? Should I do it with a grid you think and show that? I, oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Let's switch to a beauty dish with a grid, which will minimize my spread like crazy. And then you're gonna see why I can't use that to bounce with because there'll be no light to spread with. All right, so let's do that. Let's shut this off. Ah, oh, the things I do for you, Autumn. It's okay, it's okay. Look at this, I gotta take this big heavy box off now. Look at this. All right, so I'm gonna use this beauty dish right here. Look. Oh. So this is a Pro Photo Silver Line beauty dish, right? So there's a lot of beauty dishes out there. There's a lot of different styles. Silver has more of a bit of a kick to it. Um, white is a little easier. Some of the discs in the middle are translucent, which is what I tend to like. Did you just shut off all the lights on me? And if you really want to make this beauty dish as like optimal as possible, dent it like that. <laughs> and like that. That's a new one. Look, there's a new dent. Look, a new all one. right. So what, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make this, uh, Beauty Dish by nature is a harder light source, which is good because we wanna see those shadows, right? But then I'm gonna throw this grid on there, and this grid is gonna limit the spread. And if it limits the spread, I have no light coming out of here any other way to bounce into her. And we're gonna see if we can, we can show that. Okay, if this hits you, it's gonna hurt. I'm just letting you know. Oh, you know what? I slammed this down too far. Are there any questions while I set this up? We good? No, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we'll do one with and without. I'm going to start with and then we're going to, but you're going to see like the contrast really jump on this, okay? Um, a lot of people go to beauty dishes like that's like the end all and like it's, it's, it's not really for everyone. There's some faces that it's just not going to hit right. Let me see. Look at me. Hey, you. Look at you. So I'm looking at her nose pattern, and I'm, I'm all right with it. Also, you're going to look at the symmetry of those shadows. Can we uh, cut off the uh, light number two? Yeah. Hey, you. All right, cool. Is there any questions online? Online. Okay. Is there a bunch of questions online? No. Okay, so this is a beauty dish. We're seeing that chin shadow now. It's going to spread to the background because I have half this dish flying past her, which is all right. I don't care about the background. We're not really getting into that. But I'm going to throw this grid on. You can already see how much light I lose, right? What? Nobody's getting a blue background tonight. It's not enough with the... So the fill light doesn't always have to be on access, but on access is the most likely success. When we say on access, we mean going at lens. So when I use the, um, when, I'm sorry. So a fill light, meaning an actual light source, a second light source, you don't want it just coming from anywhere. It's better if it's coming from the lens at a less intensity than your key light. If you start doing complete opposite ends, odds are you're gonna start making double shadows. You'd be surprised how many times you see two nose shadows and things like that. Or the background, if you need the background, is going to be a nightmare. So you, probably you want to explain again about the TTL and the shirt thing, because there's a little confusion about if the you know, her skin will be overexposed based on the shirt she's wearing. So there's a question online about TTL. What's up? From Paul. From Paul. All right, Paul. So the question online about TTL is one of that, that thing I said about the shirt. When TTL fires, before you take the shot, a quick millisecond light comes out of this light. It's a measured amount of light. So it knows how much light it's putting out. It's going into my camera, and it's using the, the camera itself to go, okay, well, this is how much light I put out based on where they put the light and the camera settings they're at. I know it needs to be at like setting, number f setting five in power to be correct exposure, right? So it reads this 
we take the shot, the exposure looks okay. If I were to change my scene with Autumn and she opened up her, shirt, her jacket or her, her top and it was a stark white shirt like this jerk, this is gonna reflect a lot of light. So that pre-measured amount of light seems like it's reflecting more, therefore adjust my flash for that amount of reflectance. Therefore, it's not consistent because every time you take the shot, it's measuring for just that shot. So if you're looking for consistency, TTL is not it, okay? Make sense? Okay, cool. Uh, so now we have the grid on. Oh, did you just tie your hair? Yeah? Can I take it down? No, it's okay. okay. I mean, it's fine. I mean, I just put... It's okay, it's okay. But because I limited the spread, I'm actually, it changed a lot. So let's take a look at this. It usually will boost up the contrast quite a bit. Yeah, we lost a bunch of light. Beauty dish, grid. Although... Let me do it again, because I think TTL was just inconsistent. What do you know? TTL was inconsistent. But moral of the story is, look at how much contrast we just got out because the spread's not there. Now, if I try and put a little bit of bounce into it, you can actually see that this is all I'm gonna get out of this light to bounce as opposed to all of this. That's gonna affect how much I can fill her with. So every decision I make in my lighting affects everything else. Nothing is just like, oh, this will fix that and nothing else. No, it, everything is going to affect something. It's always a trade-off. When we're uh, making photographs, we're trying to balance something out. And if I'm taking a weight off here and putting a weight on there, something's going to change. Well, I put this on for more contrast. Why am I picture in picture on myself? <laughs> Yeah, I am. I'm looking at me in the corner. There's my hand and there's my other hand. What are you doing, Norton? Is, this is your leader. This is, all right, let's take a shot. There's not gonna be much of a bounce. No, put it, click on PC. Up top, up top, up top. Right there, yep, attaboy. Now click on, on nope, oh boy. Okay, but you see how there's no bounce? So nothing changed. I put the whiteboard there. It changed last time. There's no spread for it to catch to chuck back in there. Okay. I got you. Yeah. So how does it differ if you have the beauty dish with a diffuser rather than... Okay, so when people put a diffuser on a beauty dish, you're kind of negating what that beauty dish is for. And in that case, you're just making a soft box that happens to be 20 inches and in, in that wide. I think the only time I've pulled out diffusers is if I was going to be like, oh, I'll switch to a small box. Oh, wait, I'll just throw a a sock on this dish. You're not getting a beauty dish look because you have to realize that wherever your light source ends is the light source. So if I have this, now my light source is this grid. If I have that sock, that sock, forget about the deflector plate, forget about this shape, that sock is my, def my, if I bounce the light on the ceiling, that ceiling is my light source. So you have to keep that in mind. Wherever your light source ends before it starts make making its way to your image, is your light source. Does that make sense to everybody? I think we lose sight of that. I think, you know, you go to the lighting desk and be like, I'm gonna buy a bunch of stuff that I stick in front of lights and that's what's gonna happen. And it comes with all these attachments. So we use all these attachments. I think you and me would agree, right? Anything that comes with attachments, we kind of just throw all the attachments away because we want what we bought. We wanted this specific look. And beauty dishes themselves are so specific that Dan did a whole demo just on beauty dish. It's so specific that when people use it correctly, it's amazing. When people throw it in just to throw it in, it's like, what are you doing? I can use a butcher knife to cut anything apart, right? But if you use that butcher knife to really hack something the right way, it makes a big difference. That was a bad, that was bad, that was bad. We started talking about serial killers before I started the stream, I'm just saying that, so. But does that make sense to you, you know? Um, I, I think that's what kind of separates people from like, I'm just gonna shoot to, I know where I'm trying to go with this image. Or if you work on set with somebody that knows what they're trying to do, when they make certain decisions, they're, they are clear as to what the positives of that are and what they're, they're trading in for it. You know, I think when you guys, has anybody seen any of my stuff on Adorama TV? Anybody? Uh, have you guys seen the Paris video or anything? No, I know, shut up. There's, there's decisions I had to make there because there was so much stuff going on, including the ambient light, that if I dropped the shutter this much, I'd get this cool motion, but then the light from this starts coming into play. It doesn't work out. And the same thing happened when I shot in direct sunlight with speed lights. 
It wasn't exactly the right tool to use because I was the, battling a sun that was crazy blazing. So when you're doing your lighting patterns, the same thing. If I use the super, let's make a super soft source. Let's do that. Do yeah. All right, so I'm gonna open this up. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. Okay, so now this is my light source. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Let's do it with the bounce because we didn't do that, right? Let's do that. Although with a beauty dish, I'd probably use a silver. Yeah, ooh, yeah, okay. Let's do a silver. Hey, you, hey, ah. <laughs> We're doing a demo. We're do <laughs> Let's take a look. Yeah, just a little bit of snap. And then when you look into her eyes, you will see that glint and you get that half look of the beauty dish itself. Okay, so that's a, a relatively not soft light source because it is kind of soft because we're close to her. So if I pull this away, it's a beauty dish. If I point at someone, it's gotta be beautiful, right? Right, that, that's the rules, right? Isn't it, right? No, okay, well, let's do this. Oh man, I pulled it farther away. What's gonna happen now? I guess we're gonna get harder shadows, kid. <laughs> No, come here, look at me. Let's take a look. Look at that. Same quality of light, different shadow patterns. Let's make this light source softer. And how am I gonna do that? Well, first I'm gonna awkwardly stroll back here and hide from you. And I'm gonna awkwardly open up this cabinet that I locked like a jerk. And I'm gonna pull out nothing because I dropped the key. I'm gonna pull out this. Dan, I might need your help. This is a giant diffuser. If my light goes through this, what does this become? My light source. And then look at the size of this. Look, she's gone. Look, she's gone. You wanna just uh, put this up like this? So Dan's gonna hold it so that we have spread. What we're looking at when we hold this up though, is that the, the modeling light is filling the diffuser, okay? Hey, look at me. I'm gonna flip this to white because it's not, I don't need the specularity, I need softness. And I'm going to make Dan sweat a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's do this. How's the background? Yeah, the tilt it, tilt it, yep. So he's tilting it because I don't want this line on the background. All right. Let's take a, oh. Look how soft that just got. Look at how soft that just got. Same light source, same distance. You can relax. Ooh, Ooh. the Gavin Hoey reflector. Can I zoom in on the face? Look at how soft that is. Look, go here. Even the color temperature starts changing. Why? Because it went through this diffuser, which may be cooler in temperature. When you guys are buying soft boxes and you wonder why one's $400 and one's 60 bucks, Buy three of the one that's 60 bucks and try to tell me one of those isn't warm. Consistency. When you guys see us using the same like same strip lights or whatever, we buy the same brands of certain caliber because I need to know if that light's gonna match that other light. Other brands that are, are cheaper, things like that, are fine if you're starting out, fine if you don't care about that stuff, or you're not doing commercial work where it's gonna be more work for you in the long run, but they also buy materials that might be on sale on the market that day. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, you can sit down. Daniel Norton, everybody. Daniel Norton. Yeah. That's also a really pretty shot. It's so pretty. It is pretty. Let me help you out with that, sir. There we go. There you go. Atta boy. There you go. All right. You almost had it. You almost had it. You get it. We'll give you a piece of candy. It's not the register. All right. Oh, you're stealing all your jokes. Okay, so what, do we, what just happened here, right? We made the light source bigger which allowed for a lot of bounce because it was hitting the entire bounce board, right? So all that light that I was gonna lose came right back up and filled her in really beautifully. And even though we're filling in shadows, she has a shape to her face. Her chin is still gonna be like six to seven inches forward than her throat. You're never gonna make it look like she doesn't have a chin, you know? Cause the light source is gonna hit here, grade eight here, and the balance is gonna come up here. When that happens, right? Oh, I'm totally off camera. I'm sorry, let me do it again. When you bounce, it hits here, gradates here. Here's where your shadow starts. You're bouncing back here, trying to break that gradation. But this line, there's still no light source there. There's still no fill there. And that's where you start seeing dimensionality.
But just because you see dimensions doesn't mean it's not filled in. But you could look at someone and go, oh, you have some textures on your throat, some lines or something like that. Maybe I can fill those in and smooth out that skin a little bit. You know? How many times have you looked at yourself in a beauty mirror and gone, I look great. And then you look like garbage the rest of the day. Because, because all that light is coming right at you like a wall. How many times have you seen people with a ring light and they just look like two eyeballs and a nostril and somehow that's pretty? <laughs> right? I mean, it's, I hate ring lights. I'm sorry, but like enough. Uh, the reason that is is because where's the shadow going to go if it's coming at you like a wall? There's no shadow here. There's no shadow there. So every wrinkle, every pore, there is no shadow to be had, right? Doesn't mean it's a good photo. And I'll tell you this. If you shot every client with a ring light, they'll just buy a $30 ring light and get rid of you. So it's just, you know. But when you give someone something like this where you're shaping their face and giving them different feels, different looks, you have someone coming in for headshots and they leave with three different feels for different book uh, auditions they might have. You, who do you think they're going to come back to? And who do you think's going to, what photos do you think they themselves are going to want to keep close to the chest, right? Anybody can go look at a nice sunny window and take a selfie with a cell phone, but you're shaping someone and giving them your interpretation based on the light you're reflecting off of them. I look out because I get the shooter. When I was photographing my mother, no joke, I had no clue where to begin. You can ask him, I was texting, like, I don't know what to start with. Because like, I was thinking, like, do I want to make my mom all glammed out? But then in my fed, I'm like, no, I want to see every scar I put on and, and wrinkle I put on that woman's face. Like, this is the woman that, you know, looks at, I love my mother, but whoa, I mean, hey. <laughs> but no, no, but I, I mean, I wanted to document my mother and, and I wanted to see my father's face, you know, because one day I'm not going to be able to. And I wanted to see that. Not this glammed up, cleaned up, bull, hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's a choice I made. And I was able to do that because you get the lighting the way you want. Okay? So what was my choices? not to fill in all the texture on their faces, right? I wanted to see that bone structure that's in my bloodstream. When I see Autumn, I really want to see how beautiful she is and how heavy those eyes get and how punchy that hair gets, you know? And that's why we start making these decisions. There's like four different looks here and all I did was have her face forward. Make sense? Any questions on this? Yeah. All right, uh, what time are we at? 553. 553. Wow, I did this one fast. Um, well, it's not, you know, usually when there's a lot more people, we have like more discussion. But is there anything we're not getting on? Like if you have any minuscule issues with lighting, this is the demo to do it. Yes. But how would you, if you don't have a key light and all you have is speed light? Well, your speed light is your key light. Okay. If you're saying if you don't have a studio light, that's another story. So if you have on camera light, is that what you're saying? Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, so I'm not going to stand here and tell you that like you can create anything with anything. There's a lot of stuff you guys see us do, which is like fully exploiting our gear to no extent. And in a hard spot, whenever we're on set, if we don't have something or we need time, we don't have time, we can make it stretch. But getting a light that's on camera to look like it's off camera, your only bet on that is bouncing off of something else, having it reflect off of somewhere else. In fact, we got time. Yeah, dude. Yeah, forget it. All right. Ugh. This one's going out to you. What's your name? Denise. I'm the nephew. How you doing? Yeah, that's worse than your jokes. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crush down a reflector onto this. I'm going to make it a side light. Okay. Now, just because you have one light doesn't mean you can't get one reflector or spend a dollar on poster board. Or if you're on location, move them towards a bright colored wall. No one says you can't move them. You know, and if they say no, well, sucks for them. It was their chance to get a portrait. You know, that's what I say. Uh, is this the one we break? Yeah, it's the bad one. Ugh, what do we want to do here? Okay. So I'm going to make this. Well, first of all, how about we start off with if it's a small ceiling. Okay, fair. Okay. So when you're using on-camera light, which is funny because you're actually doing this, aren't you? On like on the 11th, are you doing intro to flash? Intro to flash. Are you doing this? Maybe. Okay. You might want to check out Daniel on the 11th because he'll be doing intro to flash and he'll derail everything I say, so it's okay. Actually, we'll start off with uh, white. So almost every ceiling you're going to encounter, almost, is white because that's it, it saves on lighting, it's reflecting, all that stuff. So let's say, actually, I just did this demo on I IGTV if you go to Instagram. <laughs> Oh, let me move this out of the way. So we're done with this light. This light is now out of play. 
It is going in the corner. It's been bad. I'm gonna shut it off. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now we're just working with that speed light that's on my camera. It just woke up and said, oh man, I gotta work now. You know. So, uh, yep. Patty has a question. She says, uh, how about a second light as a fill? How far back and what size? Oh, I never did get to the second light, huh? You did a quick thing. But you I did a quick thing. Uh, let's get through this, Patty. I'm going to go through this on camera light kind of stuff, and then I'm going to go into using a secondary light source as a fill light. Okay. Wow, I totally skipped that whole part. Go me. Go me. Okay, so I'm not sure what speed light you have, but almost everything is the same. Bounce light, it moves, it shifts, it's whatever. You have a dome, and the dome spreads the light out. This isn't going to make it necessarily softer. It's going to get you more of a spread. It's going to break down the specular highlights, which is like the white spots in people. So let's take a shot with just uh, going forward. So TTL, straight camera flash. We're going to hate it. It's okay. We're going to fix it. It didn't even fire because I turned the head off like a jerk. That was good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Show has no light. Crazy, right? Whoa. If I was working in an event and I didn't have anything, the first thing I would do is try to get, not get them near a wall. I'd get them to like die off into the atmosphere itself and use my shutter speed to drag it to let more of the light and the space come through, but we're not doing that. I got this light right here, right? In fact, because technically this whole thing's a ceiling, I'm just trying to get a ceiling under me. So now, let's get this. Obviously a ceiling's not gonna be this, and obviously a ceiling's gonna be bigger. Well, it's not gonna be slanted either. You never know, you could be slanted. But, uh, let's take a look. It starts getting softer. We stopped seeing, so I mean we were here, actually let me do it vertically because, let's take a look. So it's, we stopped seeing that hard shadow, right? Now, if we just walked and had ourselves something to reflect on, right? Like, uh, this pizza box just happens to be here. <laughs> Let's take a look. Look at that. That's on-camera lighting, filling in correctly. About the only thing I hate on it is the background shadow, and I would fix that by pulling her off there or angling this way, rather, okay? But... Really quickly, we just fixed it. How? We made the light source bigger and we filled in those shadows, okay? I could do the same thing with a side light and do a reflector this way. Uh, you could do the same thing as if you were in sunlight and using the sunlight as your key and this just filling it in. But then you have to really pay attention to where your sun is when you're shooting someone. And that's why ambient light is annoying because you don't have control over it. So as that sun moves, as that cloud moves, as that angle of the sun moves, it's all games you're gonna play when, if I control my light, I can shoot whenever, however, whenever. Okay, so that was a quick one, but we're gonna do, what do we do? Oh, second, second flash, right? Okay. This is, see, this is what happens when I forget my own demos and they dictate what they wanna see. I just, <laughs> who's, who's watching? Fernando's watching. Hey, Fernando, you, you didn't buy me lunch today. I'm just letting you know that. I thought I was gonna get Paulie G's pizza, just saying. All right, so I'm gonna put uh, this light back into play, and then we're gonna add in a secondary studio light to show you a two light setup. What difference would the soft bounce on the A1 make? The soft bounce on the A1. Uh, I like the soft bounce, but I have to tell you, I use it in a weird way. I use it more as a strip light off camera. I find that it gives me the exact spread I like. It gives me uh, no loss of power. I like it a lot, actually I used it today. Linda, 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 Linda. <laughs> so this is the soft bounce. The way I use it, and they're gonna tell you this is wrong, but I don't care pro photo. I put it on top of the dome because I like the dome to be shallow. The magnets are a little weird at this point. What they'll tell you is that this goes down on top of this and it's more stable. So I'll do it like that because I'm a mensch, you know? But right away, my light source got bigger, right? So it's softer, but it's also indirect. So while it's coming out this way, it's actually bathing a little bit, okay? So let's, oh, wow, okay. I'm like shooting a grill. Yeah, no, I'm, shoot, I'm shooting a, it's like I'm shooting a barbecue ad. Let's take a look. 
Not bad, better than death light, all right? And if I were using this to mix with ambient light as a fill, it'd be beautiful, okay? But I really do use these more as hair lights off camera than anything else. Okay, let's get off of that. Uh, what am I doing again? Oh, right, two lights. two lights, jeez, man. Sorry, this is like, I'm telling you, this is my fourth demo today. I feel like I've said the word light eight zillion times today. All right, hopefully my mom isn't watching after that whole spiel. That'd be, that'd be bad. She'd be like, you're not getting any matzah bride for Passover. She's gonna say that, she's gonna say it. Fernando claims because I was busy? All right, we'll find out. Okay, let me get this out of the way, make sure that everything's safe. Is everybody good so far? Is all this helpful so far, pertinent information? Not just the ramblings of a guy that looks like a janitor? All right, so I'm gonna use the beauty dish, why? Because it's on there. It looked good, right? So why not? Pizza box. How you doing? Great. You all right? Mm -hmm. Freaking out? No. No, you all right? I'm freaking gonna... out. Why aren't you freaking out? We're doing a demo, that's what we do. So I'm gonna pull this back in and I'm gonna give it pretty standard, the best case scenario light. Like we're not trying to make a bad pattern so you guys can see it. We're gonna finish a little bit here, okay? So let me turn this on. And this is on A, A. Okay, I'm gonna shut this light off. What are you doing? Is it a disco in here? What are you doing? What is this? I'm gonna have a seizure. I'm gonna <laughs> you gonna hold my tongue down? Are you, sir? Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, you are. Got my tongue Daniel Norton, everybody. Daniel Norton. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start off with a T-tail exposure from scratch, and let's just do that. Let's take a look. Okay, pretty clean. Let's get a little bit of a glow going from her, okay? So I'm gonna switch this into manual so that now whatever power settings I'm at, I'm stable. This is staying stable, she's staying stable, nothing's really moving. I can, it, in real life, I wouldn't stop and talk to you, I would just keep working so we can be a little more free. But I'm going to, oh, huh, it's right here, look at that, yeah. So I'm gonna set up a secondary light. Now this is kind of basically a butterfly light and it's like an under over type thing. And this is pretty much probably the most popular thing for like a beauty type setup. And the reason that is we're basically doing what we do with the bounce, but we're controlling it completely with an active light. Well, you just saw were inactive fills, right? They're just inanimate objects that are reflecting light, including a pizza box and a water bottle. Okay. So now I'm gonna take, where's the other light? Oh. This light right here. Ugh. So the light that's above in the, in the beauty dish is set to about six. This is a more powerful light. I'm gonna start it out. At where? Three. About three, right? About three is pretty good. I'm gonna even play it safe, maybe do two and a half, because it's physically gonna be closer, okay? I don't wanna use this stand, but it's all I got right now, unless I do a drop. Yeah, all right. So I'm gonna pull this one by three strip why? Because it's here. No, uh, the one by three strip is great. One, it keeps a minimal light source if you need it, but it could also be big enough to give you a softer look, or it could go from a portrait to a torso really easily. It could also wrap a face, and if I have all this residual light flying, what can I do with that light? Bounce it back, right? We just did a bunch of that, right? Denise got it. Why don't you got it, mustache man? What's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> How you doing, you all right? Okay. You think I grow a mustache like that? What? You think I grow a mustache like that? Maybe. Maybe? All I got was a maybe. <laughs> All I got, I'm gonna use a different stand. This is too much. Starbucks, they call these monopoly. Well, I'm gonna, take the, uh, I'm gonna take the knuckle off. So the light's too high with this stand. This is a shorty, which is usually pretty good, but not in this case. I'm gonna drop it down. Yeah, this is all right. Before I start making an erector set happen in here, let's start with this. Okay, so this is a Profoto D2, which will melt someone's face off. Not your face. <laughs> and we're gonna start it off where? About a little under three, why not? Because now I'm, I know for a fact I'm two stops below where I'm set here, plus, in theory, another stop based on this is a more powerful light, okay? So let's do this. Hey, you. I'm gonna turn on this modeling light. 
and then I'm gonna actually, whoa, okay. Yeah, you are filled in, okay. Okay, so now I have it on proportional, so I can actually see this light's intensity based on how much I put up in power. So if I were to go up to like, oh, you see how much it gets brighter? So now I can actually see how much my shadows break. Let's do that. So that's our initial shot without a fill light. Man, oof, that was a tough one. This is a long day, kids. I'm doing it for you, Jason. <laughs> oh, you know what, I have to turn on. Did this fire? Mm -hmm. It did fire, yeah. Let's take a look. Wow. Wow, what a glow. Did you break it? Okay. So let's take a look. Let's, let's investigate a little bit. No fill, fill light. Key light didn't change, fill light added. Guess the exposure, because I'm a baller. Yeah, <laughs> nah, but what I want you to see is a lot of times people think it's blown out, but if you look, there's skin texture right there. Sharp. Let's take another shot. Now what I want you to do is twist this way a little bit, with the shoulders. Yeah, and then turn it to me, chin down a little bit, tilt like this a little bit. And I just unplugged myself. It's a pro demo, kids, pro demo. Hey, Tether Tools, I need a lock. Just letting you know, Tether Tools. This is how you get free stuff, Dan. Yeah, you just yell it out. You just yell it out. Tether Tools, I need stuff. Okay. Now by moving her, it's the same thing as moving the light. Now, this is a very clean, very glowy type portrait, but I can refine it. I could drop this down half a stop, half a stop. Look at that. Now there's a jawline, but she's still glowing. You won't do that with a bounce. You don't have that calibration. See that jawline? This is how tight you can get it to a point where I don't edit and I give her a flash drive full of photos when she leaves my studio. She doesn't wait two weeks. She looks like what she looked like on this screen and we're done. You know, color grade maybe. But as far as your lighting goes, you shouldn't have to edit your lighting. We're photographers, and in this case, we're creating all of our light. Because remember, that was all the light I created. Not the modeling lights, not this light. This came from us. And this is why you get that extra light if you need it, as opposed to constantly having to use a bounce. If you're looking like everybody's shape, face, or shadow patterns are looking the same, this is how you define it. If I were to change this modifier to be smaller, my shadows would be less filled in, less spread. If I were to make it bigger, I'd probably put it behind myself and she could move freely and it would fill her in wherever she wants. If I had a five foot octobox behind me, kicking light forward, no matter where she moves, that same fill light's everywhere. How many times, you guys seen that, right? Like people throw up behind themselves. This jerk right here does it all the time. He thinks he's cool, you're not. And but it's, but, it's a, but it's one of those techniques that if I was shooting, you know, three quarter for like a lookbook and I was running models in like crazy, I'm not going to sit here and look at every jawline, every eye socket. I'm here to document the clothing and make everyone look as good as I can, but it's really to sell those clothes. That's when that comes into play. Make sense? So you're making your decisions based on your final goal. A lot of times you'll see us swap things out because something's working and we're like, oh, let's go towards that direction. But once you start realizing what you're doing to get to that direction is the right choice, that's when you start realizing what you're doing with light. This whole like, ah, throw a three foot octa there, I guess that's right. Or my favorite, and we've heard plenty of guys say this, everybody looks good with a five foot octa. Yeah, of course they do, it's a giant friggin' light. <laughs> but why? And what if that person comes in your studio and says, hey, I want something more shadowed and dark because I'm going for a crime saga audition. Oh, well, we'll use this five foot octa. Really make your decisions based on your final goal. And it's almost like shooting pool. It's gonna go in the corner pocket when I say it's gonna go there because all light is always predictable. So it kind of led up to the question I was gonna ask you. So you're not gonna have this five foot octa there. Mm -hmm. You have smaller sources. Mm -hmm. I know you've been doing the kind of no, this limits me as far as like, if I want to do a full body, right. I'd have to recalibrate a little bit. I have to stretch my lights out and then have to start mixing the angles of them a bit to overlap the shadows together. Because at that point, I'm stretching out, which makes more shadows. So my fill light has to keep compensating for all those extra shadows. And that's when you start running into issues. However, once you start getting to a fuller body look, I can push this to the left or right. I can spin it 
and start filling in the way I need to, but we're talking about a different shot, but same concept. So it all fits. And we always get the question about like full bodies and groups. It's the same philosophies and principles. It's just different applications. And you just have to realize, well, instead of me being right on their face and that no shadow, now I'm talking about three people in the shadow from that guy's shoulder. Well, how do I fill that shadow in? You know now. You know, so. Can you do a three-quarter body with that setup? Can I do a three-quarter body? Uh, yeah, let's do this. You, want, you mind standing up? Yeah. You're going to make her stand up. The mustache guy told you to stand up. Right. She told, whoa, now he's speaking oh, for you. Right. Now he's speaking for you. You hear this? What was that about mustache wax? I don't know what you just said. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what is happening, Dan? <laughs> all right. So first of all, I'm limited on my space here, so we're going to have to improvise a little bit. This is where they test you, Dan. This is where they test you. Hey, you. How you doing? Great. What was that? What was that about the mustache guy? What is this? <laughs> All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break this lighting down. I want to get her face right. And usually when I'm doing setups like this, we have to make sure that our model is aware of what's going on. A lot of people think like anybody can be a model, but really it's not there's a thing to it, like knowing where your light is, where you should stand, how your proportions and angles look. And that's Autumn's job. And she's really good at it because she knows that her face is usually going to have to go towards the light because the second she moves away from the light, when there's no light, there's... Oh, my God. Everybody is going to scream on the count of three, all right? One, two, three, scream! Shadow! I'm not taking another shot till everybody screams on three. One, two, three, scream! Oh, man, look at this. I got a crowd. Amazing. I'm sweating up here for a reason now. Who would have thought? All right. All right. How did my career turn into this? All right. Yeah, so she's pretty good because this is basically going to spread to about here. But remember, it falls off, right? So my brightest point is going to be her face. I'm okay with that because that's where your focus is going to go. If we start losing uh, exposure on her arms and stuff, I'm all right with that. In this case, if it was more of a, a fashion or a full body look, I'd use a different light source than a beauty dish probably. Uh, but if I was doing a portrait for Autumn and she's like, I need like an all body look, I would focus on her face more. Make sense? Okay. So now my fill light is now going vertical because I need to cover as much space as I can. And I'm going to be very uh, conscious of the height of it because that's where my spread starts, okay? All right, so we're doing a three-quarter means. I don't care about the shoes. No, no, sorry. I'm just, I mean, you know. All right, let's take a look. Let's step over here. Uh, let's make some space. If I trip and die, um, it's your fault, man. All right, let's do this. Uh, I don't want to crush this pizza box. This is like a really good pizza box. When I find a good pizza box, it's like, man. But then again, I think, has anybody seen my demo where we take a plastic bag and a balloon and make soft boxes out of them? You go to any garbage after a kid's birthday party, you can do a whole studio setup, I promise you. It's true. Oh, we didn't try those. Okay, when we're done with this, I'm gonna try something I haven't even tried yet and I'd like to give it a shot. There was a sale across the street on some stuff that I wanna try out. All right, you. I'm gonna arc it and what I'm going to try to do is pitch this so it has about a 10, 15 degree up because I want to get in there, but I also want a lighter torso, obviously. All right. I need more space, but I'm not going to get it. Let's take a look. I probably got the roll of the paper in there. All right. So what's wrong here? Her face is way lit too much. It's filled in too much and I'm not getting anything but like an overblown face here. So, I'm gonna go into my A group, which is my key light. I'm gonna drop it down a third. I'm gonna go into my B group here. You know what, I'm gonna start out with um, just lowering it down like two tenths, just to give me an idea of what's doing what so far. Best bet is actually, if you get into a hard spot, do each light independently and see what they're doing. In fact, I'm just gonna do this manually. This is so uncomfortable, it's crazy. Mustache guy for the win. Let's take a look. Okay, see that? We looked at what the light was doing, we weren't into it. I'm losing a lot of fall off on her body. In that case, what I might do is physically lower this. However, it's gonna be a waste because she's wearing actual black. To make detail come up in fabric, you need harder light sources. 
I'm not doing that here in a small space. Instead, because there's really no detail to be had, it's just jeans pretty much, I'm gonna lower this a little bit. All right, you wanna give me that same pose? Fitzing. Oh. You can laugh, it's okay. You can laugh. <laughs> nice, you see how it opened up just a little bit and that was just by the height? Now, what I'm trying to get you to realize is, look at how minor and small my motions are with the lights but that are actually making changes. This is what separates pointing a light and praying and really realizing what's happening there. She could use that, that's fine. I might throw another light on the background to gradate it evenly, something like that. Or if I had the space, I'd move her off of it completely so that my key light doesn't even hit up top here. And we, actually, you know what? Let's use a grid. Let's use a grid. Was there one thing I was gonna do? Oh yeah, we're gonna do that. I'm really, you think it's, what do you think is gonna happen? You think it's gonna suck? So across the street is a stationery store and they're going out of business and everything's 50% off. And every time something is cheap like that, I think, well, what can I use that I can throw away in a shoot? And I found some really reflective metallic-y stuff that I wanna try. So let me see. Oh, okay, cool. This might be it. But I'm gonna go into my A light, which is that. I'm gonna give it three tenths of a stop more because I lost light by putting something in front of the light. Let's take a look. Oh, way contrasty, right? Well, what if I just left all my lights alone and I just opened up my aperture a little bit? That affects both lights at the same time, allowing more light in. So I'm not playing with power ratios anymore, I'm good. Let's take a look. And she gets brighter. Now I have a more focused light on her less light on the background. In fact, this light is what's probably hitting her, in which case I might put a flag there or something to block the light from spreading. But for the most part, that's what we're looking at. In fact, hey Dan, you mind coming over here? Oh, look at you, Dan. Back out of touch, Dan, thanks. Oh, double tap, I'm a jerk. And there we, yeah, see how it actually affects that background though? Oh, gotta switch the switcher, sorry guys. Look at that. So this is the last shot we took and we were here. Actually, we were here and then we kind of ended up over here. Now, what would I change on that? Maybe a hair light, separate her from that background. If the background's gonna go dark, light her more. You know, get her off of it. If it was death black, we'd start seeing just her skin. At that point, the shot isn't three quarter anymore, right? It's really about her skin. And at this point, the little bit of gray separates her out, but I could really, actually, geez, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Come here, mustache guy. Woo. Mustache guy, everybody. Mustache guy. All right, I'm gonna put this on group C and I'm gonna set it down. Oh, the battery's dead. This is from the last shoot, sorry. So what am I, here's what I'm gonna do with this. Remember I told you guys I like using these as rim lights and hair lights? Mm -hmm. Guess what you are, Perfect. sir? Yeah. I'm a light stand. You're a light stand today and I'm, I could put it on a stand, but you, sir, you, <laughs> sir, have earned this one. Uh, so I'm gonna set this up in, at five, which is half, you know, in between. So what I want you to do is, so most of the people mistake a hair light for being like right here. What I want from this is kind of at me a little bit, okay? okay. So right there is pretty good. Autumn get into position for me. Cool. I'll let Dan sit there. We'll forget the flag for this one. Let me just make sure it fires. Yep, cool. Let's take a look. And you can start seeing that over here, this hair light starts kicking, right? Now what I wanna do is really see it a little bit. So I'm gonna go into my C group. I'm gonna put it up on a, a stop, start seeing it come in. Let me take a look. This, I should have gotten down a little more. You start seeing it come in, see that? We're dialing in where we want things to be. So I'm gonna go into my C group. I'm gonna give it a half stop more. Oh, damn, all right, I don't know what's going on with that, but let's get off of that. 
And there she is, separating out of that background. Let's, let's get you on the other side, because that's the darker side of the frame. And instead of edging out her cheek line, maybe we'll just edge out her hair. Let's take a look. Nice. You see that jump? Subtle stuff. Oh, not that one. Come on. Subtle stuff, but it's there, right? Yeah, cool. Mustache guy, everybody. Mustache guy. Mustache guy. Okay, we're going to try one last thing. Look at that. No, you can't keep this light. <laughs> We're going to try one last thing because I really want to see what it does. And if, if there's, I think that's what we do every demo now is try something I've never done in front of everybody and make a fool of myself. All right, let's get you to sit again. Let's get you down. If I, if I wanted that on her hair and not the cheek, it's about angling her the right way. So if, she, if, her, if that light is exposing to her at all, which you have to realize that if you put yourself in the position of whatever you're trying to affect the light at and if you're seeing it, it's going to affect it. If I had this grid on and I put my face where the fill light card is and I don't see the light, it's not going to affect it. It's the same thing goes with her light. After a while, you're going to be able to just see it. You know, it's just, I don't know, what do you think? It's like a feel, right? Like, yeah. yeah. We just feather it Yeah, you just have to feather it pretty much. But it's also about her positioning too. Blah, 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 stuff. Okay, I'm going to do this because I'm really curious. We're just, I'm just going to be handholded too. So, okay, look at me. Watch your eyes. Okay. So I'm just going to start off with a single key light again. Let me take a look. Okay, cool. So that's a shadowy little bit of a portrait. Now, I bought these. I said, I wonder if they're going to work. Remember when we did the fluorescent paper, made some color shadows? Well, I got these rigid. These are rigid, all super rigid. So what do you want to do? Want to do green? Let's do green. Oh, wow. Gee, yeah, this is going to work. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is going to... Look, she's already... Look how alien she looks. You use those? You're, I actually you're stealing them. this from this guy. Yeah. Right. Totally stealing from this guy. There she is. Green shadows. Let me see if the pink shows up. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, pink shadows. Green. Pink. What else do I got? I have to, we can just do straight up silver. Oh. I know it's getting heavy, right? <laughs> Silver's going to be nice. Well, what's good about nice, yes. So what's cool about these is they're what we call dappled. So odds are they're going to be easier on specular highlights because the light's kind of going in a few different directions at once. So, all right, cool. Uh, yeah, go buy these. I don't know. Purple. Purple one? They didn't have blue. You believe that? No, we can put a little back. Hello, purple. Chin down a little bit. Up a little bit higher. Look at me. Yep. It's cool because I can see this like purple dot in your eyeball. What a finale. What a finale. Actually, my finale is I'm going to grow a mustache. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that, I'll leave it there. All right. So we did a lot of weird stuff in here, kids. Um, in the end, this nice soft portrait is probably going to be the... Let's take a look at what we did here, okay? So we had a shadowy portrait. We added a bit of a fill. We started putting in a speed light to fill that in. So that's a speed light fill. I gave her some colored shadows with some paper to show you what the shadow gradations are doing. We went super soft and made it one big light source. And then he was like, can you do a three-quarter? I was like, oh, man. And I did it. And then we got it more refined and we got it down to this with a hair light actually. And then we gave her some weird shadows again. We'll just, I don't know, pick one, that one, whatever. So we did a bunch of stuff and keep in mind, all she did was stay in one position. We moved all the light, we moved all the shadow positioning and we changed all the angles of shadows, the depth of those shadows, the textures on her face, shape of her face, all this stuff would just fill it. Crazy, right? Just remember, when light hits, it falls off. So narrower sources will cause faster fall off. If it hits here on the face, shadow start here. If it hits here, you're not going to get too much shadow over here, okay? The closer the fill is, the more it's going to fill in. You bring in that bounce card, that's the bounce most light as you're going to get out of that card. If you want to really dial it in and really make that light what you want it to be, that's when you start making a light source in there as opposed to just a bounce. And you'll see a lot of times when we do demos that we'll like scrap the card and go right to another light source just so we have that control. Uh, size of the light source affects everything. 
And that's your first choice is what do I want this person to look like? What do I want out of them? All right. Okay. You guys can follow me at last X witness on Instagram. Uh, you can follow me that on pretty much everything. Autumn, you are Laney Lou, right? Yeah. L-A-N-E-Y. L-A-Y. L-A-Y. N-E-Y-L-O-U. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I got to give her props here. Hold on. Do it, girl. Get it. Look at L-A-Y-N-E-Y-L-O-U. a girl. All right. Are you done? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to die now. Bye. All right, like... <laughs> Hit FTB. Hit FTB. FTB, FTB on the stretcher. Are you live right now? Yep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Hold on, I got it, I got it. Well, I was... It, it ends weird like that. Okay.